Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, back for another episode of the Hill Country Artist Podcast. Today, I'm thrilled to have with me Denisha Clark. Denisha, first of all, welcome, and thank you so much for taking the time to visit with me. Thank you for having this and allowing us to tell us about our art. You are a first in many ways, first of which is you grew up in Kerrville. So could you tell us about that? My, my parents were from Fredericksburg, Lano, got married, came to Kerrville. And I was born here a long time ago <laughs> and graduated from Tyvee High School, went to Starkey and Peterson and then Tyvee. And, but growing up here was, we had a lot of family up in Fredericksburg and Lano. And I spent most of my summers and early years with my grandparents and my aunt and my cousins. It was just one of those things we did. So it would be fair to say you're a Hill Country girl. Six generations. Six generations. What was Kerrville like when you were growing up? Sleepy or? It was a very nice, calm town that dealt a lot with the big ranches. We had huge ranches around here. And Shriner Hardware and the general store took care of all the ranches. We had feed store there and all the hardware, anything a general store would have, we had it. But it was very calm. It was not anything like it is today. Driving through it, it today was like, it. it's so much bigger than where I live in Bernie. But you have such nice wide streets and it's calmer than Bernie is still. But there's it was a nice town to grow up in. The weather was always wonderful. We had a pool for a while, and then the kids all went swimming up at the Ingram Dam for our summer times. So did you start drawing way back then? No. No, I did not. We're going to get to that in a minute, but I want to continue because you have a fascinating story. Could you tell us where you went after you graduated from high school here? I went to college in Howard County Junior College on a tennis scholarship and then transferred to Southwest Texas and went to school there a year. And then my husband and I decided to get married because he was getting ready to go overseas during Vietnam. And we got in 67 and in November of 67. And he left in February of 68. So we were married three months and then he was gone. So he got to Vietnam right in time for Tet? He was there. It hmm. was is something he's i have to put say this but he's one of the most remarkable men i've ever known he's he is one of the most greatest supporters of my everything i do and he's the one that encourages me to continue doing the art <laughs> so you moved back to what i'm going to call the hill country although maybe it's a little bit outside of it in bernie when did you move to bernie in 1975 uh, Bernie must have been sleepy, sleepy in 1975. It was little. <laughs> in fact, we came from Fort Worth and we got down here and it was like, oh my goodness, this is really small. We had a little tiny grocery store called Blue Tag. I had never seen anything that small before. It was like up in Fort Worth, we had Kroger's and all that. And so we come down here and it had a little meat market and it had some canned goods and some fresh vegetables. And it was like, <laughs> it was just too, it was small. It was that, and this is not anything negative, but Bernie is a very German town. It was one of the very earliest communities and they were cliquish. So any newcomers, they held you back and it stayed that way for quite a while. Now there are very few of us. And I consider myself one of the old timers. The new people that have come have no idea of the history that they're living within both in Kerrville and in Bernie and in Comfort, Fredericksburg, because these communities were small. They were tight knit. They were ranch count type of towns and I am so grateful to have lived during that time. Now let's turn to you and your art. Okay. When did you first start doing art? <laughs> October of 15, <laughs> 20, 
2015. I had never had, I had art in as a freshman in high school and I had an art literature class in college. That's my art. I went in to cancel a class in aerobics because something had happened and I couldn't do it anymore. And there, the, oh, there were all these women working on something. And I asked the lady, I said, what are they doing? And she says, oh, they're doing pastels. And I said, what's that? And she said, it's a type of painting that's done with a pigment that looks like a piece of chalk. And she said, you need to join us. And I said, no, I don't think so. I can't even draw stick figures. And she said, you just need to come and try. So some things had happened and I needed something to fill the void. So I thought, okay, what I can do, go and draw some sticks. And I went and I was shocked because I realized that I could do more than a stick figure. And I, I painted with them for quite a while. And then after about four years, I took my first oil painting class. And I'm, I've done oil painting since then. So I do both pastel oil and now I'm working on watercolor. So that's the second first for this podcast series, an artist who started in 2015. Almost <laughs> everyone has started when they were a little girl or got interested in college. We've had some that kind of picked it up when they had kids and were around the house. But you're the first person to really pick it up later in life. Could you tell us what that was like for you? Did it really fill that void or you needed something to do? Did it really help with all of that? In I actually retired, completely retired in 2009, and I'd become a master naturalist, and I was very active, very active, and we had a really bad car wreck, and I, I could not do a lot of stuff I needed, and the painting filled that void, and it gave me people to work with, and I, even though I consider myself an introvert, I, I do be around people. And I was a high school teacher for 20 years. I came into education when I was 36, so I was much later. I spent 23 years in the Navy reserves, and I never had time. I had two children. I didn't have time for anything that was like art or any of that kind of thing. And so when I found it in 15, it was like, Let's try it. I went home from that class and I bought all the tools I needed, which was crazy because I could have lasted a week and said, wow, I spent all this money on all of these different chalks and pencils and all the things that you need with it. And, but I kept it up and it has been one of the most enjoyable, incredible experiences I've ever had. And what I paint is my memories, the hill country, all the things that I love. So let's, we have to talk about your website because okay. on the opening page of your website, <laughs> you have an old leather baseball mitt with a baseball in it. And both Andrew and I just said, basically when we pulled it up, wow. And you said, there's a story behind that. So tell us the story. And Andrew <laughs> pulled it up on the screen. I was raised in bleachers, <laughs> to put it mildly. My daddy played baseball. He played for the Fredericksburg Giants, Comfort, Kerrville. He was the pitcher and manager of the Kerrville Cats. But he always played baseball. He was an athlete beyond words. He golfed, he bowled. But his baseball, that is the only glove he ever had. And my son, my grandson had that glove. And when my father had passed away, my cousin gave it to my grandson. And so I was over there one evening and my son-in-law said, Denisha, I have an idea. And I said, okay, what's that? And he said, we got your daddy's glove. And this is the baseball that Trey started practicing with at nine. He said, let's put the ball in that glove. And those two are together. My grandson got a scholarship to Southwest University, 
Southwestern University for baseball. He was a pitcher. He was also an excellent catcher. My daddy was a pitcher and a shortstop. And that glove is old. It's probably from the late 40s. And tattered and torn, hard wear. I look at it and I I look at the strings. And when I paint, when I started working, that's done in pastels. And to get that texture was unbelievable. To work it to where it looked like soft, worn leather. And some of the strings are falling out. And on it, it has, I think I put MD, MDL or MD Lee. And that's what's on there. My dad always initialed everything. And my husband does that too. And I think it must have come from the military. And, but anyway, I gave that picture to my grandson. And <laughs> He doesn't have a, his own really good place yet to live. He's working. And so he said, why don't you just keep this? And when I get a really a home, I want the picture. Because he said, I don't want it. Because chalk, pastels, can if you drop it, it can destroy it. And so I look at that and I, get, I can get very emotional because that's two people that I love beyond words. My dad was, he was pretty incredible. He had... Everybody in the world loved him. And anyway, so that, I call it the legacy of Lee and Swartz. And so that's that. And they still have it. So what, you've talked about a couple of the different things you paint. I believe one you said was memories. And the second was landscapes. Could you tell us about the landscapes? The landscapes are like Willow City. My, my great-grandparents both sides we there was a lee and there was another lee and those lees married and they were different leads and they lived up in willow city so i go up to willow city and i've painted the creek one year we had blue bonnets about that tall it was about four or five years ago and we went up there and it was the water there's at that top left there it looked like there was water in the creeks and what that was, it blue bonnets. It was so blue and the smell was so strong. It was beautiful. And that watercolor is Shriner Park and the old barns are from around the hill country here, Enchanted Rock. My dad was raised right behind that. Let's see, that third painting down was the very first oil painting I ever did to the left and then up that one with big rocks was also enchanted rock so those are the type of place and i love west texas i love the southwest and so i've painted fajada butte from chaco canyon i've d done some drawings i haven't put them in here but the drawings are from mesa verde and so it's everything i do is country, the things that I love. It's just. So I've talked to several artists about the Kerrville art scene. Can you tell us a little bit about the Bernie art scene? We have a lot of artists up there, but they, they participate in a lot of different areas. Right now we have the Bernie Art League, and that's just a group of women that come together that are artists, and we put on, we hang our art in different locations like several of the banks around the area. We hang them in, we have a Bernie theater group. We put our hanging paintings in there and we hang them and people buy them. And then we just, well, we just had a new architect firm that opened up and we've put our paintings in there. I've got three paintings in there. And that was very exciting. And so it's not what you call, we don't have shows, but most of those people belong to other clubs like DK in Fredericksburg, KAC here, Peel Country Art Foundation. And so they can participate in shows around. What are, Do you have any upcoming shows? I've been fortunate. I'm excited to be participating in the Comfort Art Festival, which is September the 16th on High Street in Comfort. And so that's coming up in Real excited about that. It's an outdoor festival. People come and look at your art. 
and I sell a lot of cards. I take make cards from my art, greeting cards, and then I take also make prints, and so they sell a lot. People have a tendency to like the hill country and some of the things that you paint. And for me, it's just, I get excited when somebody just says, I really like your style or they don't have to buy it. They just makes me feel good that somebody appreciates what you do, however you do it. And I am by, no, I'd get in trouble if my husband heard that. (laughs) If I said that I'm in no way a high end artist, but I, I, I paint and people like what I paint. Denisha, unfortunately, we're near the end of our time for this episode. But before we leave, if our listeners wanted to find out more about you and your art, where can they go? They can look at my website, which is www.denishaclarkfinearts.com. I am on Instagram, I am, which is Denisha Lee Clark. And I have Facebook, just my Facebook which is Denisha Lee Clark. And, and that, those are the places that most people can find. Denisha, I wanted to thank you again for taking the time to visit with me today. I hope we can continue this conversation. Absolutely. It was wonderful. Thank you so much. And all of the artists in the area are so appreciative of being recognized. Thank you. Thank you.